Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the UBC Vantage College online presentation. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Lee Ditch, and this is my colleague Mark Babin. Um, we are here to tell you a little bit more about the UBC Vantage program and answer any questions you may have. Um, before we begin, we already have quite a few questions popping up in our chat um, chat box here. So if you could actually please save your questions until the end of the presentation, that'll be great. We don't want to lose and uh, have too many questions and we want to make sure we get to them at all. So just please save them um, until the end of the presentation. We may probably answer a lot of your questions during the presentation as well. So if you just hold off, um, wait until we've, we're finished and then we'll have lots of time at the end to get to any questions you may have. All right, so today's agenda is talking about more about UBC Vantage College. I'm sure a lot of you have questions or may not have um, heard about UBC Vantage College before. It's a brand new program, so we'll share more about what we're about. Um, the next, uh, Mark will go through the important steps of what to do month by month. And then lastly, we will have our questions and answers. All right, so going forward here, uh, I'd like to explain to you more about the international program at UBC Vantage College. It is a starting point for your UBC arts or science degree, um, and this is for academically strong students who just miss the UBC English admission requirement, and so you are academically very strong. However, you uh, do not um, actually meet the direct entry requirement. However, you still fall within um, the range of UBC Vantage College. Now, a lot of students ask, where is uh, UBC Vantage College based? It's actually on the UBC Vancouver campus. Uh, we are using UBC facilities here, so you will be attending uh, classes in uh, where other cl uh, courses are held at UBC. And so you'll be mixing and mingling definitely with all the other UBC students. However, we will be in small cohort sizes, and you'll be in course or classrooms um, with only UBC uh, Vantage College students. So that's how we can offer a small classroom size uh, and cohort program for our students. Now there's arts and science uh, with academic uh, programming support. So embedded in all of your courses, your core courses, so in the science stream, the core courses are chemistry, physics, and mathematics. And depending if you're doing the computational science or physical science, uh, we have comp um, computer science and earth and ocean science as well. And all of our uh, English instructors will be embedded into those core courses. And so what will happen is, for example, if you have a paper or anything in, in your courses, once you go to your um, language and literacy education course, um, they will actually take a look and say, hey, let's examine that paper and see what your barriers to the English, um, your academic English are. And so you can really focus on the English content. For the arts stream, the core courses are um, political science, geography, and uh, psychology. And the same process will be uh, there as well. You'll have your English TAs actually embedded into your core courses. And so, as I mentioned, we do have three standardized program streams, uh, one in the arts, the global citizenship stream, and two in the science, the computational science and the physical science stream. And th the really great thing about UBC Vantage College is that we're offering a first year research project called Vantage 148-149. And basically you will receive credit for this research project. It's actually a year long project and it'll span from once you begin your program until you graduate where there'll be a student led conference. And this research project will summarize all of your academic learning that you have during the entire year. So you really get to um, reflect on what you've learned and how you've uh, grown as an individual. And so we think this is really exciting because not a lot of students, especially in the first year, are able to connect with faculty and actually um, do some research uh, during their undergraduate career at UBC. And on top of this as well, actually, is that you'll be uh, signed up with a faculty mentor. So a group of about 25 to 40 students will actually have, be assigned to one faculty mentor, and they'll follow you through your uh, first year at UBC Vantage College, and they'll be able to provide you academic support and help you with your research project as well. So to be eligible for UBC Vantage College, now there's some of you who may not have been admitted yet, and so you're still applying. So just to um, talk more about the qualifications of to be admissible to Vantage College, you must firstly have a competitive academic record. So we are a UBC program, and UBC is a top 
40 universities in the world. And so we um, are a very rigorous program and we um, offer UBC courses as part of our program. So you're not actually doing separate UBC courses when you are in, for example, your physics course or your psychology course. You are taking a full first year course. However, our course just has the extra embedded English support. And so we must make sure that you have a competitive academic record to be admissible to our program as well. Nextly, you must be an international student, so you must um, be able to apply for a study permit to study in Canada. So if you're a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, unfortunately you would not be admissible to our program. Nextly, you must be graduating from uh, a recognized uh, university or college preparatory program. So generally that means uh, high school for most um, cases. And so if you are graduating from your local high school curriculum, then you would most likely be admissible to the UBC Vantage College program. And lastly, you must meet UBC's academic entry requirements. So again, we are a UBC program offering an arts and science stream. So for example, for the science stream, you must have the, the math requirements. You must still meet the physics and chemistry requirement as well. And for arts, um, take a look, depending on your country, there may be some extra requirements as well. So you must fulfill those requirements to be admissible to the UBC Vantage College program. All right, and lastly, um, again, uh, for our students, there is a band of English proficiency that is required. And so it is a, a 70 in the TOEFL, with minimum of 16 per section. And for the IELTS, it's a 5.5. And then um, the subscores is 5 and 5.5, depending on the subscore as well. For more information about that, you can check out our website, and it'll list all the academic requirements there. All right, so I'm going to pass it on to Mark, who can follow up about your next steps. All right, thank you, Lee. And uh, again, hello, everyone. My name is Mark. Lee and I were just mentioning before we started the presentation, we recognize a lot of, of your names uh, mm -hmm. because we've been emailing with you in, in your questions to uh, Vantage College. So again, welcome. Um, I just want to take you through uh, also some of what you should be doing up to this point uh, in terms of, of all of the steps that you hopefully should have taken. Again, many of you already have been admitted, so good for you. You've gone through most of these steps that you should have gone through up to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but for those of you who are just missing uh, a couple of steps, this is why we're here. This is a session to help you, to give you information, uh, to make sure that you know uh, what you need to do. All right, so this is just a quick overview. I'll go through one by one. Um, so to start, first of all, of course, you need to complete to have completed your application by now. Um, and that would also include submitting all of the required documents. And the way you can do this is to check your status. So uh, this means to go on to your Student Service Centre account at UBC. Um, there's a website there, students.ubc.ca slash SSC. So if you've started your application, and in fact, all of you in this session have, because we only emailed those who have uh, at least started your application or had been admitted. Um, so you can go there. If you have trouble finding the SSC, just go to Google and search uh, University of British Columbia SSC and you will, you'll be able to find yourself at the Student Service Centre. So this is basically your one-stop shop. This is where uh, you will be notified um, about things from admissions, um, all sorts of student-focused uh, information that, that you will need to, to know about. So important place to keep checking back to. So of course, um, hopefully, uh, in all of your, your cases, you will be uh, admitted that you're all strong competitive students and we'll look forward to welcoming you. This is the next step, is once you receive your admission decision, you would be notified in your SSC, in your Student Service Centre account. You would also receive a paper copy, either sent by mail or by courier, depending on when uh, it was sent or where you are located. And this will include a UBC uh, Vantage College letter of admission, as well as a very uh, glossy uh, red covered book. This is your student registration guide for, actually not registration guide, it's your, uh, uh, your admission guide for UBC Vantage College. 
Uh, and it gives you a lot of the information we're sharing with you here in terms of what your next steps are, how to accept your offer, etc. So it's, it's a helpful document as well. On that note, actually, before I move on, if you uh, have been admitted and you are still waiting for your package and it has been at least four weeks, do email Lee and myself at the, uh, at the email address mentioned at the end because then we will uh, see if we can uh, fix that, that issue and get you your information as soon as possible. So of course, the next step once you've been uh, admitted to UBC Vantage College is to accept your offer. And to do this, uh, you would again go into your SSC account, uh, accept by June 1. Um, as well, if you haven't already, to start your, um, your housing application as well. Um, usually, you know, by May 1, uh, we recommend to complete your application. And after that point, you would also receive, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you'll receive your housing assignment as well. Um, what you will need to do once you get your letter of offer, that is your uh, trigger to then go to the Canadian Embassy or Canadian High Commission, go to the uh, CIC website and begin your, sorry, the Citizenship and Immigration Canada website uh, to begin your study permit application. Uh, so that, that is, is something that you need to do right away. Again, applying early is important uh, just because in some countries, timelines can take anywhere from three weeks up to a couple of months or maybe even longer, depending on where you're applying from. So, so don't uh, stall on, on submitting your application for your study permit. And again, the, uh, the website to find the application for the study permit to study in Canada is cic.gc.ca. If you are stuck or you have concerns or questions, there are people uh, here at UBC that are qualified to answer immigration questions. Uh, it wouldn't be Lee or myself, but we can direct you to those who, who can help you. So just let us know. Of course, the next step uh, that you and your family will be concerned about is building a bit of a financial plan and a budget for your first year. This will also be important um, and something that the Canadian Embassy or, or High Commission or Consulate will be looking at in your study permit application as well. Um, and so just to give you a breakdown, this is roughly what you should expect uh, to, to pay. These are um, in Canadian dollars. Right now, we're roughly at 90 cents to the to the US dollar. So it's a little bit cheaper than the, the US dollar right now. Uh, the tuition fee, that is for the full first year. And that's actually 11 months of study, uh, $30,000. And that's basically breaks out to about $10,000 per, per term. So um, September, your terms are September to December and then January to April. And then you'll have basically most of the summers from May to mid mid July as well. Uh, living costs that would include your housing, uh, your meal plan, so it includes all of your meals, um, and health insurance as well. Personal expenses. This is just a budget for for things to cover. Obviously, this is a category that can range quite a bit, depending on how much of the city you want to uh, take advantage of, what things you want to do on the weekends. Um, there's a lot that you can do right on campus as well. So as a student in at UBC, as well as in Vancouver, you have the advantage of having student status and getting discounts. So hopefully you'll be able to stretch your dollar uh, quite a bit. Um, books and materials, $1,300. So again, a rough estimate of what that would, would cost. Um, so that's, that's a fair estimation. And then also your, your uh, transportation and student fees as well. You will all have a bus pass um, and which you will learn about in the student orientation about how to use uh, the bus system. We've got a, a very major bus station for the city here at UBC so you can get almost anywhere you need to go uh, and it will be embedded right in your student card so it's very easy to use and included in your fees. Of course, to offset, uh, in some cases, some of those costs, we do at UBC Vantage College have some specific awards for our students. So we're uh, very excited for a new program to be able to offer that. Uh, some of you, in fact, may have already received um, our Outstanding Student Award. It's a $6,000 one-time award for um, based on your academic merit. 
they are at this point primarily focused on academic merit. So uh, as Lee mentioned, this is a very intensive, uh, rigorous program as any UBC program is. So we do very much celebrate uh, recognizing students who have strong academic achievement and we want to make sure that you are recognized for that. We are also, because we're a new program, we are also in the process of, of trying to uh, expand our offerings of, of scholarships and awards. So there may even be some, some awards announced um, that we are not officially able to announce right now in the next coming weeks, but we will keep you posted. Uh, if there are opportunities to apply for additional Vantage College awards, we will contact you um, or publicly post the information on our website as well. Additionally, as you move on into your uh, second, third years and so on at UBC, there are opportunities to apply for specific scholarships that are related to your uh, department or the faculty that you're studying in. So um, every year there are awards that unfortunately do not uh, uh, get awarded because not enough students apply. So as a student, make sure you keep watch of the awards and financial aid websites uh, at UBC. Check with your departments or your faculties to see if there are opportunities to earn uh, awards in your second or third year as well. These awards will not cover the cost of your education or your tuition, but it certainly is great for your own resume and and uh, just you know I guess bragging rights uh, to to your your fellow students but also just uh, it can help financially a little bit as well so another so at this point moving forward we just want to go through some of the things that, that you'll need to focus on at this point particularly for those of you who are already admitted um, so as I mentioned before, you will receive a housing assignment most likely around June. Um, and at that time, you will have a sense of, of where you'll be. If you're looking at the UBC map, you will be housed in Place Vanier. It's, uh, it's sort of in the, I guess, the southwest or the western, northwestern corner of, of uh, the campus near the um, Natobi Gardens. Uh, so it's quite a good location. Our Vantage College students will be among three different houses within Place Vanier. Um, and as Lee mentioned, if, if, if you want to, uh, if you have any questions, actually we will have a, f a Facebook page um, that I know that many of you won't have Facebook accounts right now. Um, but if you have any questions or you want to talk with your current students uh, about housing in particular, or fellow students, then you can join the Facebook page and we will also be on there as well. But of course, you can also come and see us if you have other questions. Um, so the final results, we do, of course, we, you were admitted on the basis of your interim grades in most cases, as many of you right now are in your final year of high school. Uh, but we do expect to receive your final results at the end of the year, just to make sure that you maintained your academic performance. Um, the, they are conditional offers that you have at this point. So do make sure that, uh, that you submit your final, uh, you will be asked for your final uh, results from your high school performance as well, or your high school studies. And of course, you need to start thinking about uh, flights and travel arrangements. Uh, it's a very busy and popular time of travel. Uh, the good news is because you would be starting with us in mid-August, it is a busy travel season just because it's, it's a popular time for tourism in Vancouver. August in general is some of the nicest weather uh, that we have. But at least you're ahead of the typical travel time for students, which is around you know, that first week of September. But uh, do as soon as you are in the process, and, and certainly once you have your uh, visa um, in place or your, your TRV, uh, do make sure that you make your arrangements as soon as possible, or even start looking at it just for the sake of budgeting uh, to know how much it's going to cost you. Uh, and if you do have questions and uh, advice that you want to ask in terms of routing through you know, Canada, obviously you can work with your travel agent, but if you want local uh, advice, you can contact us as well. Um, you will be moving in, and I'll give you some dates just following this slide on exactly when that will be, but again, it's, it's 
around the late part of the second week of, of August. And we will be on hand to help you with that process. It should be very easy right from, um, you know, we'll see about giving you information in terms of getting from the airport and, and then getting right onto campus and moving into your dormitory. And Jumpstart, this is a, a very well-known program uh, that UBC has been running and well-recognized actually across the country for being a very full-fledged, extensive program to help our students really understand where it is that they, you know, all of the details about UBC, get settled, get to meet a lot of friends, learn about the programs and services that they're about to have access to at UBC. It really does give you a head start on, on your education. And we really, um, really it is for our students I believe it is mandatory. So yes. uh, you do have to show up. It is going to help you a lot. And there have actually been some studies to show that students who attend Jumpstart actually perform better uh, through that first year as they adjust. So it's not only important, it's a lot of fun. So we, and we also look forward to meeting you as, as staff members and faculty as well through that program. And uh, classes will begin actually, and again, I'll give you the dates, right in the first week of, of September. So you have essentially, again, that two week Jumpstart program, and then uh, you will, you'll begin your classes right after that. So this gives you some of the actual dates. So we're recommending move in on the 12th and 13th. Um, and then right after that, you'll begin the Jumpstart program on the 14th. And then we have something called Imagine Day on September 2nd. Actually, the, the, there are no classes. It's just a full day, uh, about 8,000 students on campus. Uh, all Canadian and international students are on campus and you get to learn about all the clubs. There's a pep rally. There's all sorts of exciting activities that you can be part of. Uh, it's a really, really fun day. And by then you will feel like you're already settled. You've got your, you've been here for a couple of weeks and you're, you're just getting ready to start your, your fall semester. And of course, as I mentioned, your first year of classes will begin on September 3rd. So next, I just want to, um, we've seen a number of questions. And again, if you can hold your questions right to the very end, uh, we want to be able to get through all of them. Um, but I'm sure many of you have had questions and we've seen from some of your emails around the degree specializations. So of course, uh, Vantage College, you're being admitted to one of two faculties, uh, essentially at UBC among three of our streams. So we have the Bachelor of Arts and we have the Bachelor of Science streams. So um, we'll get into some of those details. For now, if you, some of you are wondering what the transition is like and how you get into your specializations from Vantage College. So for the Faculty of Science, regardless of whether you take the computational or the physical sciences stream, um, you would declare a specialization around June uh, before you go into the, the second year. And so, of course, you'll still be at Vantage College at that time. So we'll be able to, to help you with some of those processes. And for the Faculty of Arts, it's a little bit later. So you would actually not declare your specialization until you're going into your, into your third year. So it's about a full year later than it would be for, for science as well. And some of the arts and science specializations that um, they will require additional time. So there are a number, because the, the first year that you take at UBC Vantage College is a standardized selection of courses. In fact, um, and this may answer another question, you will not have to go through the process of registering for courses because we will in fact register you into the courses. You will see on our website, if you go to uh, vantagecollege.ubc.ca, uh, there will be the program uh, streams that, that you can get into. And right there, you will see the actual courses and the course numbers and descriptions that you will be taking depending on whether you're in um, our computational science or our arts stream as well. So based on those courses that you take, that will align with certain specializations very well. Some specializations, it may require that you have to take some additional courses as well. So for example, um, you know, some of 
of our biological sciences areas. We, you will, because you wouldn't be taking biology in the first year, uh, you would have to take some additional biology courses in your second year, third year. So it will take some additional time to complete your full degree. We will send you more detailed information after this session uh, by email. So we will follow up with a uh, sort of an advising sheet about the Bachelor of Science specializations. Uh, we're also working on one with the, the Bachelor of Arts specializations. Mm -hmm. And through this time, if you have any questions or concerns, do contact us. Uh, we will also work with you through the year to transition you into your different specializations. So if, for example, you know that you really want to major in a specific program, then you can um, just let us know and, and let us know as early as possible because that will help us to be able to advise you appropriately. So all degree options outside of arts and science do, will require additional time. And for example, uh, some of you may have your first choice application to UBC might have been Bachelor of Commerce at Sauter School of Business, for example, or the engineering degree program. So because our programs are designed for arts or science, they're not set up to be seamless pathways right into, say, business or engineering. Uh, that said, there is a process you could transfer into those faculties it will take additional time. Sometimes there's competitive entry requirements, et cetera. Um, so it's not to say that it's not possible, but it's also not a stream that, that is designed for those programs. So again, if you do have questions about that, do let us know and we will be sure to assist you with, with that process. So um, that's, that's most of the information for now that, that we can give you on on the specializations. In uh, future years, of course, that doesn't affect you. We may be expanding to those other faculties, but, uh, but for now, uh, it's mainly the arts and science streams that we're focused on. Great, thank you, Mark. That was very informative. Now, we've come to the end of our um, presentation here, but before we go into the question um, and answer portion, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. Uh, I know it may be uh, very early or very late for some of you, so I appreciate you um, joining us. Um, just a couple of things before we actually begin answering your questions. Uh, I just want to uh, make sure that when you do ask your question, please try to limit yourself to one or two questions. Um, we do have a lot of um, students um, sending us very detailed questions and we'll try to answer them, but we want to make sure we give um, time and opportunity for everyone to um, submit their questions. So try to limit yourself to one or two. Um, if we don't answer your questions during the, um, during some of these uh, other um, question and answers, then you know, feel free to follow up with us. But at this point, um, if you ask any personal detailed questions, for example, specifically about your application to UBC, uh, we ask that you email us. So we have two email addresses up on the screen here. So if you have not been admitted to UBC Vantage College yet, if you have any questions um, and we don't answer them during the Q&A, email us at apply at vantagecollege.ubc.ca. If you have been admitted so if you see on your status on the Student Service Center, it says, congratulations, you've been admitted. Um, all of those students, please email us at the students at vantagecollege.ubc.ca um, email address. So again, if you have not been admitted, email apply. If you have been admitted, email students. Um, just a couple other things on um, this last page. Many of you may have seen the uh, new video that we have produced. Um, if you have not, it is a really, really great video. It was actually made um, by UBC International students. So uh, if you go to our YouTube channel there, youtube.com slash UBC Vantage College, have a look at the video and it gives you a really good sense of what it's like to be a student here at UBC, specifically an international student. Um, it's a really great video. And again, it was produced by students. So and it's just a, one of those great opportunities that students can connect with once they're here. And also, we do have um, a, a Facebook and Twitter account. Now, these are general the, the university Facebook and Twitter accounts. So it's facebook.com slash UBC, uh, Y-O-U-B-C, and then twitter.com slash Y-O-U-B-C as well. And Mark did mention that we do have a Facebook page for students. So we'll have two, one specifically for just Vantage College, so just 
the whole program itself, then one um, just for students as well. So you can chat with other students, some of your residence advisors. So if you are on Facebook, um, you can search for UBC Vantage College students 2014, 2015, and then you should be able to find it there. And then later in June, we'll actually have our official Vantage College uh, Facebook page up and available as well. And we'll let you know more about that. If you don't have access to Facebook, don't worry, you can sign up once you're here um, in Canada. All right, so let's uh, start uh, moving forward with some of these questions. And um, Mark, would you like to answer this first one here? Sure, yeah. I'll start from the top. There's a number of questions that have started. So apologies if we do not get through all of the questions. Uh, again, you, as Lee just mentioned, you can reach us at those, those emails if, if we don't get to your specific question. But uh, thanks for those already who have sent in questions. Um, one of the questions here is, how do I choose between, for example, if you've been accepted or admitted to the science uh, stream of, or into the Bachelor of Science uh, through Vantage College, how do you select the computational versus the physical sciences? Mm -hmm. This will actually be uh, done at a later stage. So uh, upon essentially in August, this will happen at the time when you are being registered, most likely at the point when you have arrived. Not to worry, um, because we do have, we are expecting you know, this is a smaller program. We are looking at the ability um, to to balance this in a way that, that should serve everybody's needs. Uh, the other thing to know is that um, majoring in specific areas, even if you're in, it could be that you would be placed in physical sciences, you would still have access to many of the, if not all of the same majors uh, that you would otherwise be able to take through the computational sciences. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, anything to add to that? Um, yeah, so at this point, um, we will be uh, allowing you to to pick your um, program stream in the summer once you're actually here. So you don't have to worry about um, choosing physical or, or computational science. And again, um, you don't have to worry about registering for your courses as well. That's something that we will be doing. So if you have any friends that have been admitted to UBC um, as well, they may be registering at the end of June. However, you don't have to worry about that. You just make sure that you accept your offer and pay your deposit and we will actually register you in your courses later in August once you're here during Jumpstart. So it's a bit of uh, you know, a very personalized service and so we want to make sure we get to know you before we actually put you into those courses. So yeah, hang on tight, you don't have to worry about registration at all. And similar uh, question just in terms of getting into specializations, can I choose a program of mathematics and economics when I finish a year's study in Vantage College? So again, you're going to have to, to work uh, with advising. Um, mathematics, uh, you would, I believe there would be some additional mm -hmm. courses. I think that is... Well, you're, you do t take first year mathematics yes. courses, so that uh, would be an eligible program stream. But if you're thinking about doing the actual combined mathematics and economics, unfortunately, we're not offering economics um, as our first year, in our first year yeah. program. So if you were thinking about doing the combined uh, specialization, then that will require additional time. If you were just thinking mathematics, then that is definitely possible to complete within uh, your UBC degree. There's another question here about um, is this a competitive program? How many students are admitted to, to Vantage College? That's a great question. And so it is, um, excuse me, a, a UBC program. So um, it is competitive. Um, this first year, because it is our inaugural year, we're um, looking to admit about 300 students from all around the world. Uh, and so um, we're excited to, to see the first group of 300 come through our doors this year. There's another question just about in terms of um, how many international students are there uh, and maybe more about UBC in general. Um, um, well, UBC in general, uh, we have over, uh, I think, was it 4,000? Uh, we have, there's, oh, I think, 9,000. Oh, sorry, 9,000, yeah. sorry. Excuse Including me. both graduate and undergraduate mm -hmm. students, yeah. Yeah, and that uh, they represent over 150 different countries from all around the world. So it's quite a um, diverse cultural um, group of students here. And because UBC Vantage College is still brand new, we don't have actually uh, those numbers, for what our students will look like um, this year for our incoming program. Uh, we do have a lot of students, again, applying from all around the world. So we're excited to see, you know, the the diverse mix once they come through the doors in September.
Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of you know, being admitted into additional classes, because you have a standardized course schedule in, in uh, this, sorry, this is responding to a question about whether you can, can enroll in other classes, um, the answer would be no. Basically, you will have a pretty full-time schedule through mm -hmm. what you've been offered in, in the courses that you will be registered in. Because not only are there those classes, but there will be tutorials, there will be other sort of extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we do want for your success to be able to focus on those classes uh, and just make sure that, that you do well and succeed so that then you can progress easily into your, your next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Faculty of Science, they've actually sat down and they've calculated roughly, you'll, you'll be spending about um, almost 50 hours a, a week um, in the science stream focusing on your studies there. So it's quite a rigorous program. So um, because it is a set program, you won't be able to take any courses outside of the, the programs, um, the courses that we've outlined on our website. So if you are still curious about what courses you'll be taking, again, please visit our website there. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in terms of the timelines for Vantage College, there's a question here about um, how many terms are there in Vantage College and when will we have holidays? Those are very important questions. There essentially are three terms. So again, uh, you would arrive in mid-August. Mid the program would actually go from the start of September until December. That would be term one. Term two is from January until April. And then you would jump right into, with Vantage College, you're doing it, again, it's an 11-month first year as opposed to a standard eight-month first year. And that's to ensure that we, we are able to build in some of that English, but also because you'll have this research project, a uh, faculty mentorship program, so it's a very full program. You will finish somewhere around the middle of July, so you will still have about five or six weeks between the end of that uh, first year and the start of your second year. So that gives you a bit of a break um, so that you can either stay uh, in Vancouver or you can go home or have uh, family perhaps visiting. So there should be a little bit of time. There's the regular break over the holidays in the winter in December. Uh, after exams, usually that's around the 20th of December until um, it depends on when New Year's Day falls, but, but usually uh, shortly after that, that New Year's Day holiday. So there's a little break there. Um, there's a reading break as well in, in the spring. So there are a number of holidays and other national holidays as well that you will, you will benefit from. So you'll have little breaks here and there. Um, and I think, I'm not sure if I missed anything. Yeah. No, I think that um, really um, sums up the, the terms. Um, one thing is a lot of students um, do get confused with um, what we call at UBC the winter session. And so our program does start in September and that's what you have applied for. But we call it at UBC the winter session. So don't be confused when you do see that if you've been admitted to the winter session, that just means the September to April um, session for us. Uh, so there is no fall session at UBC. So it's just winter and summer. So please don't worry if you see um, anywhere in your admission, if you've been admitted to the winter, that's just the regular um, September term for us. Lee, can you maybe help explain? There's a question here about uh, when should I pay tuition fee, maybe also about the deposits. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Um, so the first thing is once you've been admitted, uh, you will have to um, accept your offer. And what will happen is you'll have to go online to the Student Service Center and accept your offer online. And at that point, you'll be required to submit a $500 deposit to accept your offer. Now, you can pay that um, online with a credit card. It should be um, fairly easy. If you do have problems, um, paying that uh, deposit, please let us know and we'll see what alternative methods we can use. Um, but generally most students will pay, uh, pay that deposit with a credit card. Now, moving forward with the tuition fees and other fees that we will have. Um, and so as in a previous slide, we did mention that the program fee is a flat fee of approximately $30,000. And so they'll be broken into uh, three payments in September, January, and in April. Now, in September though, that payment will be slightly larger because that's when student fees will be assessed. Thank you, uh, Mark, for bringing it back here. So student fees are assessed in September. So you only have to pay them once a year. So, it's, so it won't be 10,000, it'll actually be um, more, let's say around 11 to 12,000 because that's where we um, include the bus pass, your insurance, all these other fees that you pay as a student. Um, you won't be assessed again in January or in April, but you do need to pay right away in September. So just anticipate 
anticipate that that fee will be larger than the January and April installment. And then, this, so that's the program fee there, or the tuition fee. Now, on top of that, um, all of our students will be in housing and you will be required to have a meal plan as well. So in June, once you have your um, housing offer, so that'll happen around mid-June, you'll be contacted by your housing department and you'll be given an offer of housing. And at that point, you will have to, again, submit a deposit for your residence and your meal plan as well. So for the residents, it'll be $800. And then for the meal plan, it'll be uh, $1,300, $1,300. So altogether, it'll be $2,100. And basically, that will set you up for um, September once you arrive. And then later through the year, so later in September and in the fall, and again, in the, winter, or in the spring, you'll make additional payments for housing and the meal plan. So that's why we've um, included the, in the living cost approximately $16,000. Now, depending on which meal plan you choose, there's the light meal plan, the regular meal plan, and the varsity meal plan. So depending on how much you eat, basically, um, that's, uh, that'll be uh, how much you pay for your meal plan. And depending on which type of room you have as well, if you have a single room or if you share a room, that'll actually uh, make a considerable difference in what you have to pay um, in um, in residence and for your meal plan. So actually, uh, we've budgeted um, $16,000. Uh, however, if you're looking for just a standard meal plan and a single room, it'll be approximately around eleven dollars to $12,000, actually. So it'll be much lower than what we've stated here. We want to make sure, though, that you do budget carefully. Um, and so that's why we've um, said the sixteen, just to be, um, be uh, safe, just in case. All right, there's another question here from uh, Vladislav, uh, just around going from a science at Vantage College and then into the Faculty of Engineering. So as I mentioned just recently on the degree specialization section, I may have already answered your question, but just to repeat for some of the others of you. Um, Again, science and engineering are two different faculties at UBC, so those, the requirements are different uh, in terms of progressing. And because engineering is a very intensive degree program to begin with, and it has very standardized course requirements, right, even from the first year into the second year, it would require additional time. You're probably looking at a five-year process here, mm -hmm. um, at least. So. Uh, that is something that you can work with us on in terms of if, if you want to take that as an option, uh, then you can work with us on that. Uh, there would be the requirement to formally apply as a transfer applicant in January of the upcoming year. Um, and then going from there, you would be able to uh, uh, hopefully, we can help you to, to transition into engineering. Engineering, uh, as well as uh, the Sutter School of Business, uh, they're both very competitive faculties to get in. So important for you to consider, uh, you know, additional plan Bs, etc. if you are thinking of going into that route. Um, we just want you to be aware that it is not designed to go into uh, the, uh, for example, into those other faculties. But if that is truly a desire that, and a risk that you are willing to take, we will do everything that we can to assist you in advising you of what courses you would need to take um, and how to get through that process. Mm -hmm. and, and additionally, um, because those programs are quite competitive, um, you will need a very strong academic average uh, once you uh, apply and complete the UBC Vantage College program um, because many students do uh, tr you know try to transfer into those programs for the for their second year as well and so uh, beyond your academic performance you'll also have to submit what is known as a personal profile so this is a personal statement and so if you did apply to UBC this year you may have to or you may be familiar with the personal profile already but you will have to answer these questions um, it's some short essay questions on top of your academic performance to be eligible to get into these programs so they look at both your academic performance and what you've done um, possibly inside and outside of the classroom as well. So they're looking for very strong, well-rounded students. And, and so uh, it is competitive. We want to make sure that you are aware of that. It, it's not impossible to get into these programs. However, it is highly competitive um, as well. So um, yes, thank you for that question, Vladislav. Uh, there's a next question here. Um, do you want to handle this one? Mark? Sure. Yeah. Uh, CJ, thank you for your question um, about whether the dormitories are far from, from the teaching buildings. So your buildings, your courses will be throughout the, 
the campus. Actually, I don't, you can't really see this image behind us, but this is actually a picture of the, of the campus. Mm -hmm. um, most of the academic buildings are within uh, sort of an academic core of buildings. And the housing facilities, so Place Vanier, where you would be located, are strategically located just off to the side. Like, yeah, right. Just behind there. Lee. There. <laughs> Uh, area. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's in most cases it's not going to be more than a ten minute walk. Um, it could be shorter than that. Many students will get a, a cheap bike, or you know, mm -hmm. even people have skateboards. You know, just anything with wheels, uh, just to get around. The campus is basically closed off in the central part to to vehicles, but it, and it's very. You know, it's a very pedestrian friendly, it's like a, a giant uh, pedestrian mall area. So uh, you can get easily from building to building and you'll find surprisingly that while it's a very big campus, that to get to the buildings you need to get to is not, uh, not difficult. It's very convenient as well because you wake up in the morning, you have your breakfast is right downstairs or or in the next building depending on where you're located. Um, very easy to to get to um, and then from there you just go straight straight off to your class so it's much easier than being off campus uh, and it's a great way to meet all sorts of people um, and and get to know you know the campus a lot more intimately than than if you were not on campus so that's why we've insisted on on housing being mandatory for the mm -hmm. first year for vantage college students yeah and actually I, I i was the one that personally scheduled all of the courses and where they're located and so i really tried to keep it um, fairly central to ubc so between classes you actually have 10 minutes to to walk between classes and so i really made sure that i didn't you know put you from this end of the campus all the way over there um, and so I really made sure that we tried to keep it as close as possible between your, all your courses. Um, and so, yeah, don't worry about um, the, the distance so much as just making sure you wake up on time for you to get to your courses. So this next question is about which documents should you bring to the school? And I think Mark would probably be, again, an expert about this, this next question. Yeah, so um, some of you have already submitted your documents for your admission uh, to UBC. Some of you have not. So again, uh, just to go back for some of you who are still in the process of needing to submit documents, we're looking for your English proficiency documents, so your IELTS, your TOEFL, um, or we're also looking for your predicted or interim midterm uh, grades from your senior year of high school. So we want to see your your full um, application or your full academic history as well. Those are the two main pieces that we're looking for um, for you at this initial stage for, for UBC Vantage College. And then uh, after that, as we mentioned before, you need to submit your final results uh, and get ask your school to send the final results. Everything should be sent directly from the source, so directly from your high school rather than bringing it with you in hand. We do not want you to bring the documents to us because those would not be considered official documents. To be official, they need to, to go through um, uh, directly from your, the school or from IELTS or from TOEFL directly to UBC admissions. And, and then they will be able to assist uh, with completing your, your file and then getting you evaluated and admitted, hopefully, and hopefully we welcome you here. Mm -hmm. um, besides the um, academic documents, are there any other personal documents that a, a student should bring, uh, like travel documents or passport? Um, as I, I mean, certainly you're going, going to need to have your, your passport to get here uh, and, and bring all of that with you. Uh, we will probably ask you at a later stage in terms of your travel arrangements. We want to know where, uh, when you're arriving. Uh, so. Stay tuned for that because we will be probably sending out a, a request. Um, there is not a personal profile, for example, for Vantage College applicants. But as Lee mentioned, there there is, um, you know, some of you who may have originally applied to either engineering or arts or science, for example, and you would have filled out a personal profile. Uh, for your admission to Vantage College, that would not be factored in. That's one difference. We're mainly looking at your grades uh, and your IELTS and, and TOEFL as well. 
Great. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so just a couple of uh, people here that have asked us questions about their application to UBC. Um, sorry if I uh, mispronounced your name here. Um, Hang Mei Loy. Um, if you do have a question about uh, your admission to, to Vantage College, please um, email us at the apply at .ca account and we'll be able to look up your information and answer your question uh, more directly. Um, also, uh, you you go. Um, you had a question about uh, your application as well. So um, please email us at the apply at .ca, um, account. Uh, we're unable to look up student um, applications right now during this presentation. So we want to make sure we answer your questions uh, more in detail. So please feel free to email us there and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Okay. Um... Yeah, there's a number of questions here about about your individual status. So I, I do appreciate that you're you're right now trying to find out uh, what your situation is. Um, here's a question, though, generally about scholarships and awards. Um, have they already been given, and what do I need to know for it if I uh, have been admitted? That is from from Amy. Um, there have been some of the awards, the uh, merit based. Uh, our, our outstanding student Vantage College outstanding student awards that have have been offered at this point. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you, if you weren't in attendance of the presentation, we're because again we're a brand new program and some of the uh, processes for setting up awards. We we are hopeful that we will be able to announce some some new awards in the very near future. Actually, in fact, today there is uh, there is a, a meeting happening. We will know more in in the upcoming weeks and we will keep you posted. Um, you most likely will, uh, you will either be automatically assessed for awards and ideally we will notify you at the time of admission. In some cases it will be later. In other cases we may invite you to apply for certain other um, scholarships if and when they are made available. Those might still be to come, so do stay tuned. Uh, I'm sorry that we, we don't have, have more information at, at this point in time. Uh, and there's a similar follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Yes, a um, question from Israel. Um, they, he or she, sorry, I would like to know if you can have a partial or full scholarship. Um, so we are offering only full scholarships, for example. So we, we don't divide our scholarships in half, for example. So what you do see on our website right now is the, the amount that you will receive um, in your scholarship. Um, so we do have scholarships ranging from one-time um, entrance awards to uh, four years uh, renewable awards as well. So you would receive that award for your four, four years at UBC. And so we have not um, awarded those um, larger ones yet. Uh, if you check on our application, our UBC Vantage College website, you will see that um, those decisions and awards will be made by June 1st. And so if you have not applied for any of our larger, um, our excellence awards, for example, I encourage you to please submit um, your, an application by the end of this month so that we do have that. And so those awards will take into account your academic performance, but we also will take a look at your financial situation as well. So if you um, do require some assistance to, um, to come to uh, UBC and study, um, please do feel free to submit that uh, application as soon as possible. And we will make sure to let you know by June 1st if you have been successful. There's another uh, question here from Xiaoyi Zheng, uh, just regarding the submission of all your documents, you've done that, uh, I can see here. And uh, what would the next step be and when can I know the result? So basically, as soon as we receive all of your documents, again, just to make sure, even though you've submitted all of your documents, make sure you check your Student Service Center account to make sure that it says that everything has been received. If you want, also, you can contact us uh, to be able to check more deeply into your your specific file, and we will be able to do that, whether it's Lee or myself. Um, and then we can just check to see in the system if there's anything that is still outstanding. For example, if you're from China, there may be uh, we you may need a CQV verification for your for your documents, and um, so we can help you to explain uh, how that process is and and what you know whether it's for the Weikau or or uh, you know we know for example in in China there's the Gaokao as well that isn't written until June. Don't worry, we know that. Um, so 
So do check with us if you're, if you're wondering. If, but if you do have everything in place, then we should be able to make a decision fairly quickly. The fastest or the first place you will know is your SSC account. And then we will uh, courier out a package to you at this point uh, to, to give you your actual letter of admission as well as your Vantage College uh, admission guide. Great, thank you, Mark. Um, so a couple of uh, related questions here. Um, one from Bogdan, uh, thank you. I know, I know we've been communicating by email recently. Um, your questions in regards to is astrophysics a, a stream uh, or, or courses that you can can uh, take. Um, we will actually follow up with all students that are admitted into our science stream with an advising sheet. We will, uh, if you, it didn't come in your actual uh, admission package, we'll email it to you and it'll list all the programs you're, you would be eligible for um, to complete in a four-year program or if it will require additional time. So hang on tight. We will send that out to all of our um, science students uh, very shortly. Um, next follow-up question uh, from Yi Sheng Zhu. Um, you're in the science stream, but you're looking um, to complete uh, a geological engineering program. And so again, engineering um, is a program that we do not um, offer currently at Vantage College. However, once you complete the science stream, you are eligible to apply to transfer into the engineering program. Um, that will, again, take additional time to uh, complete your degree. However, that is something that we can advise you more about uh, once you're here, or if you do send us an email, we can follow up with you as well. But anything outside of arts and sciences, it, again, in engineering, for example, will take additional time. There's another question here from Shin Ryu Li, uh, just as to whether, again, to, to transition into Sauter School of Business and whether um, you can also study at school in order to earn credit during holiday. This wouldn't be a possibility. Um, first, I'll answer your first question about Sauter School of Business. And as I mentioned before, uh, and sorry, you probably wrote this question before we spoke about it, so I might be repeating myself. But um, again, it, similar to the engineering uh, transition program, it would probably be about a five-year process, just because you are missing some of the uh, courses. So there would be, you'd have your year advantage, uh, and then there would be a transition year where you would uh, you would be taking certain other courses that the the Sauter School of Business requires that you weren't taking in Vantage College, and then they will look at they will ask you to write a personal profile. Um, they will also ask uh, they will look at your grades from how you did at Vantage College, and it is based on your GPA and uh, competitive entry as well. So um, something to be aware of. And again. Uh, it, because in your case, likely you've been admitted into the uh, art stream, we can advise you about all of the possibilities of where you can go, and then you can determine whether that, that will be a fit for you um, or how we might wanna, want to help you as well. And there was the, the follow-up question about oh, yeah. earning credit. Yeah. Sorry, um, to, to earning credit outside of the, the times that you're already studying. The first full year, again, because you're going right through to mid-July, um, there you won't have a chance, there won't be a break where you can take additional courses. Um, so during your, your time at Vantage College, you'll be essentially be taking the 10 courses that you've been uh, assigned for, for Vantage College. Then after that, you can um, go into the regular semesters, uh, but basically the courses that you can take will be determined by which courses you have taken. So there are prerequisites for certain other courses that you can take. So um, you'll be able to certainly take some electives in that year after Vantage College, but the required courses will take some additional time to get into some of those other other faculties. I don't know if you mm -hmm. can sort of explain that more clearly. But <laughs> yeah, so basically what happens is what you know what you take in your first year determines your progression into the, the upper years as well. And so because we do have a set program, we cannot offer all the courses, for example. Um, it's, it just uh, it just increases the amount of time, for example, if you um, are not taking, for example, we had a question question about economics, can that be finished in four years? For, and that's a great question because economics is not a course that we offer during our first year program. And so if you wanted to complete that um, program in four years, unfortunately, you would have to do first year economics when you move into second year. So that kind of places you uh, behind at least a semester or so. So to complete that degree will take additional time. So for example, economics, 
Unfortunately, if you take a look at our program stream again, see and look at all the courses, you'll see that it's not offered. And so progression into um, that stream will take additional time. Yeah, there was a similar question also for the Bachelor of Environmental Design. Again, that's, that is uh, uh, sort of in a separate faculty. It's actually in our School of Architecture and, and Landscape Architecture, uh, an undergraduate program. Again, it would take uh, some, some additional time because they have some prerequisite courses. Um, we will be sending a list, as Lee mentioned, of, of all of the majors for which you can go directly uh, in and complete ideally within four years. Um, and then the others that will require some additional courses. In some cases, it may only be a couple of courses. In other cases, it will be uh, a number of additional courses that would take a full two semesters. So um, that's something to, to keep in mind as well. Sorry. All right, thank you, Mark. Uh, so just a follow-up question, uh, how many courses can a student take uh, in one term? Um, because we have a set schedule, we uh, anticipate that most students will do five courses per term. Uh, again, this is something that is set in a schedule already, so we have what is known as a standard timetable, and that basically um, puts all your courses into your schedule already for you, so you don't need to, to register and plan anything out. Um, so five courses will be the maximum that you will be taking. Um, and so most students should plan uh, to have a fairly full, uh, rigorous academic schedule. And so there was a second question uh, following up to that is, uh, in regards to Jumpstart, and, and do you have to register and sign up for Jumpstart? That's a great question. Um, actually, um, you don't have to actually go to the Jumpstart website um, to register and, and pay for um, their program. All of our students are required to do Jumpstart, so we've actually built that into the fees already. And so um, don't worry about signing up for Jumpstart. Once you've been admitted to the UBC uh, Vantage College program, you are automatically doing it, so uh, we will internally um, sign you up for that. So don't worry about signing up for Jumpstart on their website. You can definitely look and have a, uh, a check out you know, what the program entails and such, but don't worry about applying. We will do that automatically for you. And uh, there was another mention here from, from a student just saying that uh, you had received your offer, but unfortunately, in terms of uh, receiving the information in the SSC, but you do not have uh, the actual physical offer, what should you do? Sorry, that was uh, Chun Yin Wei. Um, don't worry. So it's, if, you're, if you were offered before April 1st, it's most likely that, uh, that your letter was sent by mail. If it's been four weeks or longer, do contact us directly even after this, even though we've uh, read and, and seen your question here. Um, send us an email after this and we will follow up to check when was your uh, uh, offer actually sent, your package. We may be able to, to re-send uh, one if, if it's been too long and we will send it by courier if, if that is the case. So do let us know if you've received an admission to UBC Vantage College and you've been waiting um, sometimes you know things happen with with mail so we want to make sure that you get it just let us know and we will make sure to, to follow up mm -hmm. um, this is an, a question again from Amy Vasquez in, in about uh, taking an arts program that is uh, not in one of our three streams and uh, so again as Mark had mentioned previously, if it is a program that is not offered through Vantage College, it may require additional time. But again, um, because it is a quite detailed um, question in regards to the different type of specializations, uh, Amy, if you could email us at, uh, if you've been admitted to students at vantagecollege.ubc.ca email address, uh, we can um, further advise you there, okay? So uh, yeah, just please email us, make sure you include your UBC student number and which program you're interested in, and then we'll be able to uh, advise you through that email address. I've also had a few questions about um, what is the, the breakdown of the nationalities that are in UBC Vantage College. We sort of mentioned earlier, it's hard to tell at this point um, because we're still receiving the admissions or they're going out. We can tell you generally that uh, UBC is, uh, we were actually last or just over a month ago from Times Higher Education recognized as the most, um, we were ranked, I guess, as one of the 
actually the top North American uh, most international university. That doesn't necessarily speak to diversity. It speaks to all sorts of things in terms of our international engagement and our diversity, number of international students, etc. But we do have, uh, as I was mentioning, or Lee was mentioning before, 9,000 international students of uh, our total population from 150 different countries. Um, so you will see students from literally everywhere. Um, most international students will comment that uh, a lot of students won't actually know if you're an international student or a Canadian student. It's a very multicultural society. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, of new Canadians as well who are coming from all over the world. We also have a very strong uh, exchange program. We have 170 uh, partner universities from 42 different countries. So we have exchange students who are coming for one semester or two semesters. Um, so you will see that it's quite a diverse environment. Um, but yeah, we will, uh, again, this year, we're hoping f to have around 300 international students in the program. So you'll have relatively small classes, uh, but opportunities to connect with, with students from everywhere um, in clubs, in, in your residence halls, etc. Thank you. Um, so our follow-up question uh, is in regards to uh, your admissions and what are the competitive re grades required to maintain your admission offer to UBC? This is a great question and one that we get every year. Uh, it's a bit difficult to answer because um, Oh, everyone, we uh, we do understand that it is a very uh, exciting uh, time of the year. It's also very stressful because you have your final exams coming up. Uh, so we do understand that your academic performance at the end of this um, year for you, your academic year, when you finish grade 12, may be uh, a bit stressful and a bit difficult when you do have your exams. Um, compared to when, let's say, the spring when you were admitted based on your interim marks. So. What we recognize is that there may be a drop in your academic performance. However, we will not penalize you for that. If you know you still maintain a, a strong academic average, so very close to what you were admitted um, originally to UBC with, that's fine, nothing to worry about. However, if there's a significant drop in your uh, GPA, for example, let's say of 20% or more, then we may contact you and ask you, you know, what happened during that time? What were the extenuating circumstances that affected your overall GPA? Uh, however, that's on a very, very uh, rare case-by-case uh, -case basis that normally when we take a look at your academic average, we look at at least four or more courses to calculate your average. So to actually drop 20% or larger or greater, um, it's, it means that you would have to significantly drop in, in multiple, multiple courses. However, you know, if, if you've, your grade slightly um, decreased in, in just one or two courses, that's okay. Don't uh, panic. We do understand that, you know, this is, again, a very stressful time of year, final exams, and all your um, your all your um, standardized tests as well. Uh, and so don't worry about that. If you are concerned, uh, we will contact you. And so don't worry about sending us an email, letting us know. Once we have all your final marks, we will contact you if there is any concern. I have another question from uh, Ditong, and this may be a question for many of you. If you've uh, he's sent in uh, the IELTS exam result to Vantage Admissions Office on April 1st, um, just checking with the SSC, and it shows I haven't received my exam result. Um, what can I do for that? So uh, thank you f for letting us know. This is exactly the kind of email that you should send directly to us. If um, in this case, if, if you haven't been admitted yet, just send it uh, to the apply at vantagecollege.ubc.ca. And Lee and I both get those emails. We will we'll make sure to get back to you. Um, uh, sometimes what it is is there there are tens of thousands of applications to UBC every year so there are literally thousands of documents that are coming in um, so it may well be that we have received your document we just need to uh, then get it into the system so um, it may require a little bit of patience but we can also just to follow up and make sure that uh, we can check to on your specific case so do email us if it's if it's been a little bit of time and um, you have submitted something, but you've, you're worried that it isn't showing up in your SSC after uh, you know a couple of weeks. Uh, do do be in touch with us, and we'll we'll work to help you out. Great, thank you. Um, so this next question is in regards to moving on to second year, and how does that work exactly? So. 
um, the progression to second year will happen um, fairly automatically. So it's something that you do not have to apply for, for example, to move into second year science or second year arts. Now, there are certain conditions, though, that you have to meet. So first of all, you must pass all of your courses. So um, all the courses that are in the uh, Vantage College program streams, you must pass all of those courses. And secondly, you must maintain a minimum overall average of at least 60 six zero percent and so as long as you meet those two requirements you will automatically move into second year science or arts now what happens if you do not uh, pass one course or two courses well if you if you do not pass one course we'll take a look at your performance during the year overall and see if you know there has been strong progression if you have um, sought other academic support for example and we'll take a look at all those um, circumstances when making a decision whether or not to actually uh, see if we can promote you or if you actually um, need to spend some additional time with UBC Vantage College and we can provide more details about that but if, if that's the case we see that there is progression that you um, are a strong student and you just, you know you your first term may be in May have been a bit difficult uh, we may offer an additional term the following year so you can catch up now unfortunately if you do um, not pass two courses if you fail two courses uh, then you may be asked or will be asked to withdraw from the program and at that point we'll uh, advise you about what your follow-up options are possibly um, studying elsewhere in, in vancouver for a year then coming back to ubc may be an option as well so uh, yeah if you unfortunately do not have, um, pass um, two courses then you'll be asked to withdraw so beyond that though getting into second year, again, just 60% passing all your courses, then from there, we will automatically promote you to second year science or arts. Now, if you are a science student, um, you, you don't have to apply to move to second year. However, going into second year, you do have to apply to declare a specialization. And so you will be given a choice of three um, specializations you can choose from. And before you register for your courses in July for second year, you will be notified of what your specialization will be. And then from there, that will, that will be the academic stream that you will follow. If you want to change your specialization later on, let's say in third year, you can definitely do that again. You can apply to transfer or change your specialization if you, you know, didn't quite uh, like the specialization you were in second year. So it's uh, part of the whole process for a science student. However, uh, moving into second year, again, it's automatic. It's just the declaration of your specialization that actually requires a, an additional application. Thanks, Lee. Um, Lu Chen Yu has a question about the degree of difficulty of English courses at UBC Vantage College. So that's a great question, and I'm sure many of you might be concerned about, you know, how are we going to maintain um, achieving the academic standards to get into the, you know, to do well in your first year. That is the entire point of, of Vantage College um, is this integration of the English support not just in separate English classes, but our, our, for example, our math or our physics or geography um, instructors are working with English academic instructors to try to make embed the English learning within the content courses. So you don't have to do these uh, separated, um, your English learning will not be completely separated from your academic learning. Uh, and a lot of the recent research has shown that students who have that type of learning environment will improve their language skills better, but also be aware that we, um, academically, it will not be a simpler program, uh, but we will make sure to work on the language aspect to make sure that it is uh, more accessible in terms of a learning environment for students who have, for example, an IELTS 5.5 or a 6.0 or a range between TOEFL 70 and 90. So that's, um, you're the perfect fit for this program and we're designing it to suit students with your language ability. Great, thank you. Um, so there's a question here in regards to the um, admission deposit, the $500 admission deposit, and can they get it back if you do not study or take any courses at Vantage College? Now, unfortunately, that $500 deposit is non-refundable. So once you make that uh, payment, um, it is non-refundable. Now, if there are extenuating circumstances, uh, I, we do encourage you to contact us and let us know um, why you may want to have a 
some of that money back, but unfortunately we cannot offer a full refund. Um, at times, at most, uh, depending on the situation, we may be able to offer uh, $200 fifty dollars back but again that's on a case-by-case -case basis so generally we say no it is a non-refundable deposit if you do believe you have an extenuating circumstance we do encourage you to contact us at students at vantagecollege.ubc.ca thanks lee um amy vasquez has a question about uh this is a good question about is there a minimum uh grade requirement that you have to have at vantage college to then um get in. I, I presume that's, I'm putting words in your mouth, Emmy, I'm sorry, uh, but I think what you're asking is, is basically, do you have to get a certain minimum grade to then go on into the next year? Um, yes, you do. As, as with any uh, international or Canadian student at UBC, you have to uh, be able to progress from year to year. Uh, so the basic minimum line for any student, whether you're in Vantage College or a first year student is typically around 60% average once you're in UBC. Uh, so as, but of course, there, there's a difference between progressing into the same uh, program stream and there's, uh, and also going into a competitive major or specialization. So if you are wanting to go into a competitive specialization, then um, it won't be enough to just do, you know, that minimum average, you will have to do well in your in your first year and possibly your second year studies to then qualify to to get into that, uh, those upper year specializations. Uh, some will be competitive uh, upper year specializations, some will not. And that's again, the details um, that we we can help you with um, some of them that you don't have to worry about right away. The main thing you have to worry about is just doing all that you can to do as well as you can in your in your academic studies while you're at Vantage College. We're hopeful that based on the fact that you will have smaller classes and access, you know, to faculty at, at Vantage College, uh, as well as you know support from staff such as our, ourselves. Uh, that will be able to help you to um, do well as, as you're moving forward. So um, the best thing for you to do is reach out to somebody as soon as you're finding you're um, having any trouble or you're overwhelmed or you're not understanding something, that's the best chance you can give yourself for succeeding is to, to give us, um, to, to contact us as, as early as you can. Great, thank you. Uh, so it's next part's a two-part question. First, uh, the first part is a breakdown of the marking scheme uh, in regards to our program. Now, unfortunately, we don't have that information. So the, the question was, um, how much percent is weighted to your, your daily academic performance and how much uh, weight is the final exam? Unfortunately, that will vary course by course and our faculty are working on that right now. And once you are in your courses, um, they will definitely uh, let you know what that breakdown will be. Um, the, uh, the pedagogy right now, the thought of their teaching is that we do not want to make uh, the final exam, for example, worth 100% because that doesn't really accurately reflect the learning that's been going on. So we'll definitely have lots of assignments um, during the school year for you to complete, and that will be a large portion of your overall grade. However, the final breakdown, we do not have that yet because we're, our faculty is currently working on that. The follow-up to that is, do, do you have to take the LPI test? That's a really great question. Now, the LPI test is not required for UBC um, admission, okay? However, for the art students, it's not, you don't require it. You don't have to write the LPI test. You'll be doing a course that will take care of that. Now, for all of our science students, now, to, com to complete your science degree, you will have to uh, complete what is known as the communication requirements for science. So you will have to take one English course at minimum. And so to be able to take an English course, you have to write the LPI. So what we've planned is for you to complete your year at UBC Vantage College and towards that towards the last few months, uh, we will actually have all of our science students uh, sit down and write the LPI. So j while you're here in our program, so you don't have to do it now, you don't have to worry about it this summer. Once you're here in the program, towards the end of the, uh, the program, after you've had all the academic English support, you will write the LPI, then you will be able to take the English course in second year. And so again, for arts, 
don't worry about it. You don't actually have to do it. For assigned students, unfortunately, you do because you do have to meet a certain communication requirement, and that we will take care of and help assist um, registering and planning for you to take it um, later once you're here in the program. There's uh, a great question here also, Lu Chen Yu, uh, about setting up an account in Canada. That's a very good question. I'm sure um, once you're here, you're going to be wondering uh, you know, how to get yourself set up. That's, that's a big part of what you'll be doing at Jumpstart. Um, we will help you to, in fact, I believe bank, uh, they come right on campus and, yeah. and you can help, they can help you to set up your account once, once you're here as well. Um, same thing with phones. Uh, you know, any services that you would need at home, we will uh, have support available to make uh, to make all of that happen for you once once you arrive as a student. So, we'll we'll help you uh, with all of those processes. If you have questions in advance of that, uh, in terms of trying to set up an account uh, beforehand, just just let us know. Um, but quite. It's, it's easiest to be able to do it here, and there shouldn't be a reason for you to have to do that before, before you arrive. Um, yeah, that's great. Put it. Thank you. All right, um, our next question is in regards to transfer credits, uh, and also um, this is a great follow-up for IB and AP um, credits as well. So uh, the question is, if you have cr credits from any of these programs, or from another post-secondary institution, what will happen to those transfer credits. So because our first year program is a standard program, you have to take all those courses. And, and so for example, if you have completed IB math or AP calculus, um, you will have to take first year math at UBC. Now, if you have other courses, for example, other credits, you may be able to apply them to your degree in second year, once you're actually in the Faculty of Arts, when you're actually in the Faculty of Science. So during your first year at UBC Vantage College, it is a set program, you can't change it. So you may have to, again, take similar math courses, for example. However, I think it's a great advantage for you to, to take that course again, because, for example, when I was in high school, I did AP Calculus. However, I then decided to take first year calculus here at UBC. And what that enabled me to do was actually receive a very high mark in that first year course at UBC and that helped my overall university average. So a lot of students with transfer credits, for example, in AP or IB will choose to retake a course here at UBC just to improve their overall academic average. However, if there's additional courses that, um, that you may receive credit for, um, that can be applied to your account during second year once you're in the Faculty of Science or Arts. And if you have taken other courses at a post-secondary institution, um, we will take a look at that on a case-by-case -case basis depending on what course that you, you have completed there. But otherwise, again, it's a set program in first year, so we cannot change what we have on our list of courses right now. Thanks, Lee. Um, Jingshu Ouyang has a question, um, and actually this might apply to a number of you. Some students received a, a, an admission to both the conditional admission program and to UBC Vantage College. So um, the question is, what's the difference between them, and can I reply to both of the offers? So the, the main difference is, the conditional admission program starts before your first year of study. So you basically can go, um, you would start in July, uh, or it's an eight, an eight week program that you would have for the, the conditional admission program. It's entirely focused on English. And once you complete that course, then uh, you, can, you can go into your first year uh, of regular UBC studies. Whereas UBC Vantage College is, um, is actually your first year of UBC with the English part built into the academic portion. So it's um, the additional difference is, again, of course, that Vantage College is 11 months long instead of the eight months long. So that additional three months is to uh, help to incorporate that English study as well as the, this uh, um, intensive research uh, project that you will have in the faculty mentorship. So there's a few other pieces that are built in. They are quite different. Um, you cannot reply uh, as yes to both programs. You do have to choose one or the other. So if you have more questions about that, I mean, obviously we have a lot of detail about uh, Vantage College. We do have a, a colleague we can direct you to at the conditional admission program, Maki Natori. Um, and 
between the two of us, we can we can give you as, as much information uh, as possible to hopefully make the decision that will best best fit you. Uh, the and I think yeah, sorry, I got I got both parts of those questions. Oh, oh. all right. Um, so th actually, this question it, it would be a good one for um, our support right now. Um, someone actually has missed um, some of this presentation. Is this being recorded as well? Yes, and so this um, presentation is being recorded, and so you can view it at a later time. It generally gets uh, up in two or three days. Yeah, so in about two or three days, you should be able to come back to College Week Live and access um, this presentation. There was also a presentation about a month ago that Mark and I did as well, so you can view that one online, and we did answer um, a lot of questions. It was a two-hour presentation, and so we did um, answer quite a lot of um, student questions at that point, and so if you did miss this one and you want to um, have a heads up and and see if we did answer any of your questions previously, feel free to um, take a look at our um, older presentation as well. Um, there is a, a, another question about a student card, and will you have a student card? And yes, you will. You will have um, a normal UBC student card, so just like any other UBC student. Uh, you will be considered a UBC student. You will be paying UBC student fees. So you'll have access to the full support and services available at the university. So from the bus pass to health insurance, um, to access to clubs, uh, to the recreational facility, you will have access to that as well. Uh, and so you will receive your UBC student card. There's information online about how to upload a picture and such for your student card. So when you do come, it's available for you, or you can get your picture taken once you're here as well at the bookstore to get your student card. So many different ways um, you can uh, access that service. There's also a question here uh, just about the timing of applying for housing versus the the offer of admission and um, not to worry. So if if you've we will uh, potentially have some offers that might go out a little bit later. Um, we, you might have noticed that the, uh, we're suggesting the application deadline to be May 1st for, for housing. Um, but obviously, if you haven't received your offer or, um, or been able to receive your offer until after that date, it's kind of difficult for you to do that. Um, we will work with you. Essentially, don't worry too much. We do need you to apply, but we do have uh, spaces essentially reserved for all Vantage College students. So, but we will need to know as soon as we possibly can. So as soon as you do receive your, your admission offer, um, then do start the process once you've decided to accept your offer uh, to, to apply for housing as well. Great. Um, Esteban, um, you, you do have a very specific question in regards to um, your uh, admission to UBC. So feel free to email us at the applyadvantagecollege.ubc.ca email address, and we'll get back to you um, directly in regards to that. And just to uh, let some of you know, uh, because there's so much volume of questions that we have uh, today and the, over the last few weeks in general, uh, we, we do uh, apologize. It will take us a few, a few days to respond to any email inquiries. So. Uh, so please do not send us multiple emails, as some of you have been doing. Um, you know, if it takes us more than a day or two, uh, just please be patient. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. We do reply to all emails, so don't worry if uh, it takes a little bit longer. It's just that um, every day we're getting 30 to 40 emails, and it, just, it takes quite a lot of time to reply to all of them. But we appreciate your patience. Thank you. Another thing to note is that we will continue. We were supposed to close this session in one minute <laughs> or less, um, but we, we will extend on for another about 10 minutes or so, just uh, because we do have so, so many questions. Mm -hmm. um, just going through some of the other questions here. Um, and let me just see, sorry. Um, there's there's a couple more questions as well around uh, progression into the into the upper years. Um, again, specifically case by case, I think um, you know we will hopefully. Uh, there's a piece of information you haven't received from us yet if you've been admitted or if you've applied that we are working on getting out to you as soon as possible. That shows the list of majors that you can be eligible for to complete in four years, and then the ones that will take some additional time uh, based on the courses that you've taken at UBC Vantage College. So that will that will come in the form um, of an email, and will you know it will provide links 
to show you the courses that you're taking in in your Vantage College stream, and then you know the the list of the majors, whether it's in the Faculty of Arts or the Faculty of Science. Um, there. Are are multiple faculties at UBC. So of course, some of you, if you've seen some general UBC material, depending on who you've met um, over the years or, or this past year, or if you just come online to see different programs, um, there are 200, over 210 different uh, programs at UBC. So uh, each one will have some different requirements. So we will, we will hope to make it as, as clear as we can for you. The Faculty of Arts and the Faculty of Science are our two largest faculties. So that uh, uh, in terms of range of options, you will have many from Vantage College, but there will be some that have some additional requirements. So we will We'll try to make that clear for you. Great, thank you. Um, so, Yaxi, you, um, you have another detailed questions in regards to um, documents you have to submit. So please email us at apply at vantagecollege.ubc.ca. Um, please include your eight-digit UBC student number, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible um, with an answer. Um, again, we do not have access to your student account um, during this presentation, so um, we're unfortunately unable to answer that question. Now, there's some um, repetition of questions as well in regards to uh, course registration, the uh, international demographic uh, breakdown of our students' uh, advantage, and also about progression requirements. I encourage you to, uh, to review the um, presentation uh, once it, uh, it gets posted again. We also have, again, a, a previous presentation that we, Mark and I did a month ago, so you can view that. We've answered a lot of these questions as well previously. Uh, we just want to make sure we get to the rest of the questions we have for today as well. Thanks. And also just to mention, if you actually search uh, Vantage College, um, on YouTube or on just on Google, it should show the videos coming up there. So you'll see um, eventually both of the presentations that we will have done. Um, meanwhile, Amy has another question just ar around whether Vantage College students will be eligible for an exchange program. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be doing an exchange program during your study at Vantage College. Uh, and this would be the case for any first year student at UBC. Most students will do their exchange uh, uh, programs either in the third or the fourth year. I know for me, I did it in my last year. Um, and But there are, if you started at Vantage College, there are no restrictions for you in terms of accessing our exchange program. So absolutely, you will have the ability, depending on also which faculty you're going into. Um, I mentioned before, we have 175 partners in 42 different countries uh, in terms of university exchange partnerships. Um, depending on which faculty you're in, obviously there are some exchange destinations that are better fit for what you're studying than others, but that's something that you can research down the road. The main point I want to make though is, is that yes, you can access exchange programs, it's just that it would be in, in uh, your upper years. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Uh, just couple quick questions here. Is it okay to transfer between science and arts? Yes, that is possible. A lot of students um, transfer between the two faculties. Um, so you will be doing that uh, during the end of the program. You would apply during January and then at the end of the academic year, as long as again you pass your courses, meet 60% minimum, you'll be able to transfer from within those two programs. Uh, the follow-up question again is can uh, I designed my own timetable at Vantage College, and unfortunately, no, I have designed all your timetables already. And so uh, what will happen is once you are here during Jumpstart, uh, we will take a look at your registration, and then I will register you in all your courses. And so you don't have to worry about any registration. The timetable is set. It's just because we do have a very rigorous program. We have um, planned all your timetables out for you already. Another question uh, somewhat related to, to classes is, is the size of the classes. I think Lee can speak to this a little bit better. My understanding is that it's uh, on average there would be 75, but there'd be some that are smaller. Mm -hmm. um, there may be very few that are, are larger. But. Yeah, and so both the science and arts faculty have one special class for the, the actual project that has all 150 students in them. And that's because we want to get all the students in there for a larger discussion about the project, have special guest presenters come in as well. So that'll be your largest class at 150, but that's only every other week for most of the programs. Um, 75 will be large lectures, but otherwise you'll be in classes of either 25 or 12 or 13 as well. And so 
compared to the average UBC first year course, you will be in a very small um, classroom setting. Uh, there's another question here about can I take less uh, than five courses in the first semester? Actually, that is the case as far as I understand. Yeah, uh, and so because the way that uh, we structured, so I did previously say you, you are taking about five courses. However, some of these courses may be a year-long course, uh, and so it really will um, depend on which program you're in. Um, so for example, for the science stream, you'll actually be taking only four courses, but on top of that, you'll have uh, lab components for your chemistry and your physics course as well. So uh, it really will vary, but what I do suggest is have a look online to our program page. It'll outline all the courses there. And generally, it is about four plus the additional language support embedded into the program as well. Uh, Lu Chen Yu has another good question. Do we have major advisors? Uh, yes. And so there's Lee. <laughs> but uh, we also do, each faculty has its entire office of, uh, fa of advisors. So uh, we will also connect you with, for example, the Faculty of Arts Advisors or the Faculty of Science Advisors. Um, so we will make sure that you connect with them to, to make sure that, that you know, while you're in studying, Lee will help you while you're you're studying at Vantage College. Um, but we'll also make sure to connect you with the actual faculty uh, advisors where you plan to end up graduating from, because they will also have a lot of very helpful information. And you will need to know them for your second, third, fourth years, uh, because that will be your direct contact. At that point, you'll transition. I'm sure, although you want to stay in contact with Lee, uh, you'll you'll transition into getting help from uh, the faculty advisors as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, question from Yi Sheng Zhu um, in regards to how to apply for the accelerated math stream. What will happen is all of our science students will be taking what is known as the math basic skills test in, during Jumpstart. So it's a short math test. And based on the results of that math test, we will then uh, put you into either the accelerated stream or the, um, the regular math stream. So that's something that we'll take care of in the summer once you're here. So you don't have to worry about applying or letting us know at this point uh, if you want to be in that stream or not. We will have a math test for you to complete um, once you're here. Um, there was another question in regards um, to from Da Peng in regards to switching from science to arts. Uh, again, because we need to take a look at your uh, actual application and what courses you've done in more detail, please uh, email us because you've been admitted, I believe, to students and we'll be able to look up your account. Make sure you include your eight digit UBC student number, please. Okay, I think we're, we're getting there. Uh, again, I apologize if we have uh, come close to the end or, or we haven't quite uh, got to your question because we've had so many come through. Uh, but if there are some specific questions, just a reminder again, do go through both of our presentations because the first one is a full two hours long. We had a 30 minute presentation with an hour and a half of answering questions um, as well as this one, uh, which was basically 30 minutes with another hour or so of, of questions as well. So the first one is publicly available now. You can you can actually uh, go and search on Vantage College. Um, you'll probably see our other video as well, just a two minute uh, hot off the press video of, of Vantage College, which you can see on the youtube.com slash UBC Vantage uh, for that one. It's kind of, a, it gives you a sense of some of the facilities you'll have access to and, and some of the sites of, of Vancouver and, and the campus as well. Uh, made by UBC students, international students, uh, and starred by uh, international students as well. So um, at this point, I think what we will probably do is, is just sign off. Uh, we will be in touch online in terms of uh, emails with questions. I'm sure we'll probably see a number of questions coming in after this session with all of you here. Thank you, because we know that it's very late for some of you on the, in the, in, on the far east coast. Um, and for us, it was a fairly early morning. And for everybody in between, it was great to, to meet with you uh, online. And uh, we look forward to being in contact by email. And don't hesitate to, to reach us. So thank you very much. And uh, we Take hope care. to be in contact soon. Thank right. you. Bye.